Hi, Mike Gibson coming to you live from Sky 2017. I'm joined today by Zoltan Turi and George Hansel. Welcome, guys. We're talking about transeptal therapies. Where are we with the state of the art in transeptal yeah. techniques? Yeah, so I think if we look at uh, you know, transeptal, I think we've become more and more precise with our transeptal punctures for different uh, procedures, whether it be left atrial appendage, uh, closure, mitra clip, uh, you know, paravivar leak. I think we really tailor our transeptal puncture to that depending upon what kind of procedure we're doing. Um, we, uh, I think we rely obviously a lot on precise placement of our puncture based on TE these days or ice. Yeah, we used to be happy just to get into the left atrium and uh, it was much more of an adventure. We had much less in the way of imaging guidance uh, so that we really, it was, a, if, it was a different world even five years ago uh, in terms of how we do transeptals and what kind of technology we use to do the transeptals. So Zoltan, what do you think the biggest advance has been in improving the technique over those past five years? Uh, I, I'd say primarily the using techniques other than just a needle and an abrupt shove uh, forward of the needle to get into the left atrial appendage, or left atrium, hopefully not the left atrial <laughs> appendage. Um, and there have been uh, some technology, there's been some technology, particularly radio, radio frequency, uh, with specialized devices to let you get into the left atrium very precisely, not have the needle slip when you do the puncture, and uh, relatively atraumatically and I think more safely than we used to be able to do it. Yeah. So where are we going? Uh, what are some of the emerging uh, modalities, techniques to make further improvements? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that, uh, you know, at this point, with transeptal puncture, I think we've come a long way, and I think, I'm not sure if there's a lot more to change with the transeptal puncture itself. What do you think, Sultan? Uh, no, I think we're, we have more specialized kinds of procedures, the transeptal sheets. Uh, uh, we've gone up and down with 24 French sheets and down to much smaller sheets. So I think we're going to see an evolution, but right now I don't see a revolution in the kinds of techniques we use. I, I, I'd add that cost is an issue. And uh, the cheapest by far is just to take an old-fashioned needle that's similar to the one that has been around since the late 1950s. Right. Um, and uh, so, although RF is appealing, especially specialized uh, devices for that purpose, um, people have found ways around that with things like uh, bovies and uh, so other ways to get across that are cheaper. So once you're across, what are some of the advances we can expect once we're in the left atrium? Yeah. So. Yeah, obviously there's been a, a real revolution in what we've been doing in the, the left atrium, going from just doing mitral valvioplasties to left atrial appendage closure, mitral clip, uh, you know, paravivar leak closure, etc. Um, I think in half an hour we're going to be doing a session on left atrial appendage closure. And I think that's obviously been a very exciting uh, frontier over the last, uh, I guess it's been over a decade now since the clinical trial started and two years since there's been approval of Watchman. Right. And I think it's exciting this year. There's uh, two other clinical trials, got the AIMLET trial ongoing and uh, hopefully the Wavecrest 2 will be starting at some point this year. So, so then who's the ideal patient for uh, an atrial appendage closure? Well, the, the ideal patient, I want to give a shout out here to, to the electrophysiologist who really kept this procedure alive while interventional cardiology, particularly structural interventions, were just beginning. Right. Um, so in some ways they have the ideal patient, uh, someone whose uh, uh, atrial septum is not deformed, someone who has a nice, uh, easily accessible fossa. Um, we tend to deal with patients frequently who have bulging uh, septum and uh, so we have to be rather creative. Uh, there are all kinds of issues, like here at Sky we saw a patient with a severely tortuous uh, venous system going up to the, uh, to the septum. So I'd, I'd like to say a relatively healthy patient is the ideal patient for transeptal puncture. The least ideal is someone with a very thick fibrous septum, sometimes even has a device across the septum, uh, where you have to be quite creative and take advantage of all the imaging advances that have taken place. And any advances coming in the mitral clip type technology? Yeah, so, you know, they uh, have the new NT now, so uh, there's uh, been some re-engineering of the, uh, the, the mitral clip device and the uh, delivery system. Um, you know, I think there's been you know, more talk about other ways of uh, changing the mitral clip, whether it be a little longer, a little wider. You know, there's been arguments whether you should have uh, uh, 
independent grasping of various leaflets. Uh, you know, that's what a lot of people have been talking about and arguing whether it's even worthwhile pursuing. I see. That, Sorry. I say one of the concerns are when you start getting longer and, and wider clips is, you know, increasing French size in the transeptal sheath. And the big question is how large can you go? Yeah. So along those lines, there are multiple other technologies being applied to the mitral valve besides um, mitral clip. And we're transitioning from an era when the easy way to get to the mitral valve to a large degree was to go transapical, which is, is great morbidity involved and great discomfort. And so now we're in an era where we're going across the septum with transcatheter heart valves and a whole burgeoning list of experimental technologies. Yeah. And some of those require huge holes to be made and occasionally yeah. plugging on the way out. On so the way out. you don't leave a patient with a big iatrogenic ASD. Absolutely. Guys, thanks for your time. Thanks for updating us. And thanks to all of you out there for joining us live here from Sky 2017.